Howdy y'all, welcome back. Diving back into the old world, I've always focused on the largest, the tallest, and the most obscure buildings from our past. Today will be no different. I've made a video previously about the tallest lost buildings as well as a video showcasing some images of the tallest lost towers of Great Britain. In today's video, I'd like to refresh everyone's memories a bit and take a deeper dive into the new Brighton Tower in the town of Wallasey, Cheshire. Afterwards, we will look at a remarkable brick building, one that stood as the tallest brick building in Europe upon its completion, and yet before taking this deep dive myself, I had seldom heard this brick masterpiece mentioned before. So stick with me as always, because we are going to be looking through the oldest known photographs of these amazing structures. Enjoy. First, the one thing that strikes me is the sheer immensity of the buildings that were being constructed in Great Britain during the 1800s. What's more profound, I believe, is how we are told in the current narrative that many of the more fantastical of these structures somehow went into disrepair, and we have multiple accounts of these wondrous buildings being left abandoned or unoccupied, only to be demolished or dismantled, usually around the times of the First or Second World Wars. Admittedly, it's hard to quantify just how much power Britain was yielding as they attempted to conquer the world in the 1800s. My earnest question becomes, did all this power, in return, all these massive structures actually come from the pockets of the royalty and the government? In many instances, we are actually told that these massive structures are being built by the everyday man or private companies only to either go bankrupt or to have the businesses or the building itself fail. Then the British government comes in, demolishes these buildings and profits from the demise. Do you see how that's a wee bit questionable when we look how immense these buildings really are? But I digress. Let's begin with this new Brighton Tower, an absolute beauty. This tower stood at a whopping 567 feet tall, making it the tallest building in Great Britain upon its completion. First question to you is, how far in advance are construction and development plans put into place? We are told the architectural company of Maxwell and Took designed new Brighton Tower. Maxwell and Took are credited with designing, planning, or creating a multitude of impressive buildings in England, seemingly working around the clock at a breakneck speed just to get all of these buildings done. A more plausible idea, possibly, would be that the names of Maxwell and Took were applied later to massive old world constructions, and nowhere does that become more evident than in the case of the new Brighton Tower. The tower's groundbreaking began on June 22, 1896. The tower was architected, like I said, by Maxwell and Took. Not surprising, except for the fact that both Maxwell and Took died in 1893, three years before the groundbreaking even took place. Maxwell died on September 28th from cerebritis or inflammation of the cerebrum and Took on March 28th from nephritis or inflammation of the kidneys. What a coincidence. Oddly, we don't have a lot of relevant information about the actual completion of the new Brighton Tower. We have multiple different companies that were contracted then to complete various parts of the structure. You'd think, this being the tallest structure in Great Britain, we'd have a more accurate account of when exactly it was completed. However, we are told it was finished sometime between 1898 and 1900, or roughly five years after the Blackpool Tower. The new Brighton Tower was unique as it used mild and low carbon steel, over 1,000 tons of it, as opposed to the earlier Blackpool and Eiffel Towers, which were built from wrought iron. While the brick structure at the base of the tower remained in use through the 1960s and hosted such talent as the Beatles a record 27 times, the actual tower itself only lasted until 1919, when it was already said to be heavily in disrepair and it was demolished. Throughout time, many bad omens have been associated with the new Brighton Tower. It caused the death of six workers throughout its construction, and in 1909, two visitors, a mother and her young child, were left stranded at the top of the tower when the last lift of the night was lowered and all the workers went home, without realizing that the two still remained at the top observation deck. They were then found the next day, still in relatively good spirits. Speaking of the lift, the tower had four of them, each reaching the top in 90 seconds, with the ability to transport a total of 2,000 people. On a clear day, from the top of the tower, you could see across the Irish Sea to the Isle of Man. At night, 
the top of the tower was illuminated by fairy lights, which served as a sort of moon tower for the community. Quite a feat of engineering to be destroyed 20 years after it was completed. But that's not all that we have for this video. I promised you an old world brick structure, which you might not have heard mentioned before. And all I can say is, that's a mole. This is the Mole Antonelliana in Turin, Italy. This building is named after its architect, Alessandro Antonelli, while a mole is an Italian word for a building of monumental proportions. The history behind this 550 foot tall brick construction is interesting to say the least. The Mole Antonelliana was constructed as a Jewish synagogue beginning in 1863, shortly after the time of Italian unification. At this time, Turin was the capital of the newly unified Italy and the Jewish community of Turin vowed to create a synagogue worthy of the capital city. They allocated 250,000 lire, the Italian currency from 1861 to 2002, for the construction of the synagogue, and they hired eccentric architect Alessandro Antonelli, who promised to complete the epic building for roughly 280,000 lire. However, within a few years, the relationship between the architect and the Jewish community became strained as Antonelli kept modifying the final design for the synagogue, eventually changing the plans to make the final structure stand over 550 feet tall, which was over 150 feet taller than the initial design. The Jewish community eventually halted payment to Antonelli who then halted the construction. From 1869 through 1876, the synagogue had a makeshift roof as the dome construction was the cause of much of the grief between the two parties. In 1876, the Jewish community of Turin revealed that they had already paid 692,000 lire, nearly triple what they initially planned to pay. At this point, the Jewish community then announced that it was withdrawing from the project completely. The outlook was bleak as no one was currently willing to finish the building. The Jewish community was looking to regain their payment by selling what was constructed so far, and the people of Turin were in shock as for over a decade they had been watching the Great Brick Synagogue rise. At a crossroads, the people of the city of Turin demanded the project be finished. A deal was struck where the Jewish community would receive a new piece of land on which a Moorish revival synagogue would be built. The Mole Antonelliana, as it would later be named, was then transferred to the property of Turin, who re-employed Antonelli to complete his masterpiece with his new 550 foot tall dome design. Antonelli dedicated his work on the mole to Victor Emmanuel II. Antonelli worked continuously on the mole until he died in 1888. Antonelli originally envisioned on the top of the building a large spire with a five-pointed star. However, he later changed his mind and decided to have a genie put on top of the structure. An interesting choice. This was added then after his death. The genie itself was a symbol of the House of Savoy, and in the gilded copper genie's hand were a palm branch and a lance, respectively. On the genie sculpture's head was another spire, and this one was topped with a five-pointed star as Antonelli had originally designed. At 550 feet, upon its completion in 1889, the Mole Antonelliana was the tallest brick structure in all of Europe. The building then somehow escaped massive bombings during the Second World War, and after that it housed a multitude of museums throughout its years into current times. Today, it is the house of the National Museum of Cinema, and it is credited by many as being the tallest museum in the world. The mole appears on the two cent Italian euro and also was the emblem of the 2006 Winter Olympics. The last part I thought was worth mentioning here is within the massive brick dome, an artistic installation they call, the dome has illuminated the numbers of the Fibonacci sequence. And leaving you on that cliffhanger, I think I'm gonna wrap up the video there. What do you think about these massive structures of the old world? Does the timeline that we're presented with for the new Brighton Tower make sense? Can a tower nearly the size of the Eiffel really only stand for 20 years or less and be relatively unsuccessful only to be demolished? And what do you think about the Moli Antonelliana? Have you ever heard of this beauty before today? I've read multiple lists of the tallest old world buildings 
really multiple dozens of them. And I've looked through photographs, I've read histories, I've researched the architecture, and I've somehow never come across this masterpiece until today. So I'd love to hear what you think about this massive brick dome structure and some of the more interesting aspects about how it was created and the narrative that we are given. Please leave your thoughts and your comments down below. Please like, share, subscribe, and you can also contribute to the channel here if you'd like to. I look forward to speaking with you about these topics on the next video, and I can't wait to see you then. Cheers.